This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Recording from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. This is the Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is a show where we talk to people in and around and sometimes outside of the Pittsburgh area in technology and geeky things and podcasting uh, and all kinds of fun, fun stuff with some great interviews. You can check out over at awesomecast.com. Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on the AwesomeCast YouTube and Facebook page. And of course, if you like what we're doing, you can uh, support the show either through your likes and comments on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasting fix from us. Or, uh, of course, you can support the show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Our guest this week uh, is from, uh, as I often find guests from jobs that i'm on i I, we talked about on the show recently about social justice innovation week and the second one i've had uh, the fortune to be behind the uh, live stream switcher um uh for here in pittsburgh over at the repair the world a great uh, organization over there and uh, we have with us the winner of the 2018 edition uh of course uh karen alexander here in studio with us how you doing Good, Mike. How are you? Good. So uh, you are you are uh, as of this recording about a week and a half out from Social Justice Innovation Weekend. It's a mouthful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, but anyways, uh, well, first tell us a little bit about the concept that uh, that that won you the weekend there. Okay. So uh, the the project that I presented at Social Justice Innovation Weekend is called PGHN 360 Youth Perspectives. And it involves getting 360 degree cameras into the hands of youth in different neighborhoods around the city through partnerships with uh, community organizations and teaching these teens to Uh, film videos in 360 and to edit them. So they come out with a completed project at the end. And then we will uh, show the videos at uh, various showcases later on, as well as put them on a uh, website and on a YouTube channel. That's awesome. So so tell me a little bit about uh, kind of your, like, how did you uh, get to this concept? Like, why, why, why is this important, especially in the vein of the Social Justice Innovation Weekend? Yeah, well, um, so I, I sort of have an affinity for DIY media and, um, and really uh, appreciate the way that the technological innovation has made it possible for more people to tell their stories uh, using technology and um, new technology like 360 video is is just incredible, I think. And uh, the the fact that um, you can buy these little cameras and uh, that I, I could buy such a camera and start making 360 videos uh, was really exciting to me. And I also am sort of conscious of a lot of the changes that are going on in Pittsburgh with a lot of the uh, tech innovation here and uh, big companies coming in, gentrification of neighborhoods and how the benefits of that are very uh, unevenly distributed. And I I come out of a professional background in higher education. And so I am interested in education in general. And I wanted young people to have the opportunity to tell their stories. What are, what are they seeing in their neighborhoods and in this in the city and what do they think about what's going on here in pittsburgh it is an interesting thing that um you know you mentioned the cameras and the cost like it reminds me of back in the day back in my day you know back you, you probably went through this era too with flip cams before it was part of our phones like that was a big thing that i know like uh, uh you know organizations were hanging that out to all the nonprofits to just tell their stories right yeah, well, if, you know, for me, a, a touch point is in the late 60s and early 70s um, when video technology was first becoming more widely available. Mm-hmm. And a lot of uh, feminist artists in particular and feminist media producers were able to use that to start telling their stories and tell stories about women that that hadn't really gotten out there before. So it it really opened up um, the possibility for 
different kinds of perspectives to be heard. Absolutely. Uh, so what is it about this meeting? And I know, you know, if people haven't had a chance, you know, I know there's a lot of it on Facebook and YouTube that maybe people are coming across in their feeds. But what is it about uh, the 360 media that, that really kind of uh, uh, helps get the point across in these areas? Yeah, well, w when you view it through a headset, um, it's as if you are there in the mm -hmm. space because you can look in any direction, up, down, all around. And um, it, it really fools your brain into thinking that you are in that space. And so it, um, it gives you much more of an experience of being there rather than watching something on a flat screen. Now, having said that, you can watch 360 video on a smartphone screen, on a tablet, or on a computer, and you can manipulate the image to, to look around. It doesn't have quite the same effect mm -hmm. as watching it through a headset. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, it allows you to see everything that's going on. Yeah. It kind of, you'll put you in that place. I know, you know, things like street view now, you know, where you still like clicking through the three the, and now that's like a 360 thing that you can now experience too. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, that's great. So tell me about your experience that weekend. Um, you know, the, the format of course is kind of like a startup weekend where you, you go and you pitch and then you get to jam with some, some strangers that you meet over the weekend maybe and and you uh present it there on the final show showcase is the general format but uh, uh tell us about uh kind of the idea going into it and and kind of that development over the weekend sure sure well i, I i'd had the idea for for this project and um didn't really know exactly what I was getting into when I when I went into the uh on Friday night you know there was mm -hmm. a dinner and um and you know as you said we got to got to meet some strangers and uh there were one or two people there I knew um but we we sort of pitched our ideas that night um got into teams decided decided sort of what we were going to make happen. I had uh, one guy on my team, uh, Aaron Connor, who was, who was very helpful. And, um, so then after Friday night, uh, on, oh, well on Friday night, there was voting. And so my idea was one of six that went through. And then, um, so I was, I was in it for the whole weekend. I was there at repair the world for 12 hours on Saturday and for, mm -hmm. um, did some more work that night and then 10 hours on Sunday night. Um, and then came back Monday night for the pitch competition. Uh, but there were there was one of the great things about it was the presence of the mentors that they brought in some um, amazing people to give us advice and feedback on our projects. That was that was a huge help. Yeah, and there's a little bit of you at the final pitch uh, there, and a little bit of your slideshow as well. Uh, if you guys are joining us on the video, you can check out all that at Repair the World uh, Pittsburgh's Facebook page. Is the entire presentation video. Uh, so you can look through that and uh, other people that were in the running as well. Um, so there was a lot of, even we're looking at a slide right now about like the vetting and getting the comments and everything, you know, was there anything kind of surprising through as you're going through the process with them, um, you know, as you were developing this idea for the final pitch? Um, yes. Well, well, uh, you saw co their comments from teens at mm -hmm. the East Liber Liberty Library. And that was one of the things that one of the mentors pushed me to do. They said, well, you know, you've got this idea. Uh, to work with teens, get out there and talk to some teens. And mm -hmm. so I did. And I, I took my 360 camera, my Samsung Gear 360, to the uh, East Liberty Library, where they've got a great space for teens there with a lot of equipment, and just um, just started talking to some teens about it and uh, got, got their feedback. And the librarian was excited about it. So was a mom. But that was really helpful to me. And it was something I hadn't done uh, you know, hadn't thought about doing until I got um, got pushed to do so by one of the mentors. Excellent. And and, and I think there was a mention, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about how the library was um, already looking into this a little bit, but it just, just didn't kind of pan out for them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, the teen librarian there um, had wanted to get some 360 cameras mm -hmm. and, in fact, had been looking at the Samsung Gear 360, which I had. Uh, but the, the budget that those cameras might have been purchased for was used on on something else and mm -hmm. so she was really excited about the possibility of getting those cameras into the library through the pgh and 360 project there's a little image on the video yeah. of that uh, as well yeah. um it looks like we moved the mic stand out of the way at that point <laughs> <laughs> uh but anyways um um 
and, and that's interesting because I know like the Carnegie Library system has been really progressive with especially their team programs. I'm now here in Beachview. There's a 3D printer, for instance, right? You know, things like that. So it's really cool to see that they're already at least looking at those options too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. They had musical instruments there. There's a little recording booth. Um, and uh, some of the teens were playing games. And, um, you know, I, I think I think they're hungry for this technology. And, and not all the schools have this technology. Mm. You know, I think the, the presence of that in the schools is, is pretty uneven. Absolutely. Um you know, the, so you're you're basically getting the tools to make this stuff. What because we we always have the discussions about kind of the accessibility on the other side. You know, obviously you can do this on, um, you know the the your phones through social media uh, applications. Um, the headsets are getting cheaper, yeah. for instance. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you kind of envision like that side of it being? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I would imagine that a lot of people would access these videos just on a smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, it's the lowest. Uh, it, it's the lowest access point, really. Yeah, right. Yeah, so. it is. It is. And and again, it's it's not the 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 full. Uh, you don't get the full benefit of the, of the three hundred and sixty medium mm -hmm. that way. But uh, still, you can you can see a lot. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, it, it it means that these storyteller the videographer doesn't have the same control over what the viewer sees because the viewer has the option to look in any direction mm -hmm. which is really interesting in terms of thinking about how you craft a narrative for that medium absolutely it's interesting to watch i myself i play with the gear vr a lot and there's a uh there's like an invasion cartoon on there and the oh, yeah. way it kind of guides you to like you're you're following this character and it looks over this so you want to look where it's looking right like that kind of thing and and then it it obfuscates like you turn back and students this whole other thing that it didn't really want you to see set up right like it, it's it's interesting from a video perspective mm. um that i'm interested in too yeah yeah i've heard about different techniques i mean obviously you can use sort of audio cues to mm -hmm. get someone to look in a, a direction that you want them to look in and i've also heard about things like um having an object uh flash or move just in the um, peripheral vision of, of the viewer, or, you know, where the, you think the viewer is oriented mm -hmm. and then have it stop. So they'll look that way, but they won't even notice maybe that you did that. They just, something caught their attention, but they're not sure what. Seems natural. Right? <laughs> yeah. so, um, so, so outside of that, you have a, a kind of a, it seems like you have a very wide interest in AR, VR, got to attend the great, uh, another thing we talked on Awesome Cast was about the great VR meetup uh, a week ago as of this recording, of course. Um, I'll talk about that. And it looks like your the company that you're you're working on is is kind of entail, entailed in this as well. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I am doing consulting. My company's called XR Connected, and and the idea is for me to be a connector um, to help local companies realize the benefits of using XR technologies. So virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, three hundred and sixty video. So XR is kind of the catch-all letter we're using these days. Yes. 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 X is the X is mm. a variable, right? So That's awesome. I haven't heard that all, yet. All the R's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's becoming uh, pretty widely used in okay. in the industry now. Um, so, um, but yeah, the, all these technologies have a lot of benefits in uh, not only a lot of different businesses, but in different uh, areas of, of business, whether it's sales and marketing, employee training, um, design and engineering, mm -hmm. task assistance for assembly. There are many ways in which it can be used. And while the big enterprise companies have the resources uh, to invest in playing around with this technology and using it, smaller to medium-sized companies may not even know they can use it um or maybe they um just uh, uh don't realize that it's for anything other than gaming and so i'm hoping to help educate companies about them and to let them know about some specific technologies that are out there that they can use help them develop a roadmap to get started with this technology that's awesome so because yeah. i mean we always talk about like you know the, the the big companies can get the uh 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 high-end google glass <laughs> for instance right and things like that so it's good to see that that, that can be boiled down for everybody else to be accessible cool so what do you see um you know uh what, what's kind of next obviously you're you're kind of looking at this new idea that uh, from the weekend um what's next in in this space for you well, for for the PGH and 360 project, um, I'm so excited because everything is falling into place and we have a pilot version of the project uh, that we'll be conducting with uh, One Hood Media um, and that will run over spring break, the last weekend of March. And 
um, I'll be working with um, Stitchbridge, which is a local interactive 360 startup uh, that grew out of the Carnegie Mellon Entertainment Technology Center, uh, the master's program there. Mm -hmm. And they will be helping with the instruction, which is great because I have, you know, I'm self-taught and I, the original plan was for me to teach the workshops, which I could have done, but um, it'll be even better with uh, Stitchbridge teaching it. So then after those videos are produced, um, there will be a showcase uh, on April 6th uh, it, it, during Youth Innovation Day that mm -hmm. All Star Code is putting on as part of um, Inclusive Innovation Week. And then also I was invited to have a table to show the, uh, the pilot video or videos at uh, the CREATE Festival that the uh, Pittsburgh Technology Council is putting on. Nice. On June 7th. Nice. This is an exciting space right now, and it's cool to see this uh, this moving along. And so many involved. Like these are companies that I haven't heard of. They're working in this space yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've, I've actually I've also talked to the Lighthouse Project in uh, at the Homewood YMCA, mm -hmm. and they're on board for the summer project. Assuming I can get funding for the full, you know, to run the full project. Yeah. Um, so they're on board, and I'm talking to many other people. Um, for example, I just met yesterday with. Andy Conte at the Point Park University. Great, we work, we're, we work with them oh. on PodCamp stuff. A uh, great crew down there at the, the the CMI down there. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, they're doing they're doing a, a project in McKeesport, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so I was talking to him about bringing this project there. Awesome, awesome. And so, generally, uh, where can people t uh, see you online or uh, get a hold of you if they're interested in this kind of space? Okay, um, well, my uh, company website is. Uh, www.xrconnected.com. Mm -hmm. um, I am on Instagram as Ms. K. Alexander. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Karen F. Alexander uh, is my name there. Um, what else do you want? Do you want email, <laughs> phone number? No, 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 uh, no, you're going to get to everything from there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you can find out, get further contact details on LinkedIn, especially. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It, it, it was, it, this was, um, you know, a lot of great ideas that weekend, but of course this is one that peaked up with me. Of course, my interest in 360 and everything. It was great for you to come in and chat with us about this. Yeah. Thanks so much for inviting me. All Mark. right. Go check it out follow everything. And, uh, we'll have those websites in the, in the show notes as well at awesomecast.com. If you're catching this anywhere else and uh, check out the videos, check some of the visuals out that we were talking about and check out the uh, pitch videos over at the Repair the World Pittsburgh um, uh, uh, Facebook page uh, that we did in conjunction with uh, Work Hard Pittsburgh. Uh, so uh, and of course, please uh, support or check, support the show. Awesomecast.com. Subscribe, rate and uh, get the word out there about these awesome people doing awesome things and a lot of great awesome chats in there as well and of course the regular show that we do every tuesday 7 p.m eastern time on our facebook page on facebook live uh every tuesday 7 p.m and uh thank you to our awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.